Hello, welcome to this revisit review of D.W. Anders. Um, okay, this is a VSOP brandy produced by the Sazerac Company. It says on the bottle, the Founders Company, Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, you can do some research on the United States government's tax and trade bureau website and then if you keep going through 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 everything the list you'll find out that it's actually the Sazerac company and I think I was also looking on the Kentucky Department of Alcohol and Tobacco or whatever and they were listing like all the what they call alias names or assumed names and then the, the actual company you are allowed in the beer wine and liquor world to use an assumed name Okay, uh, the general feeling of the government is that it's the job of the consumer to take the 10 minutes to look it up. Like, going to court and saying, I bought some Blue Moon and I was, I was uh, damaged because I found out it was owned by Coors. That's a tort. The court system is saying, uh, no, nah, you could have easily looked that up. Just get lost. Okay, uh, so anyway. It's produced for Safeway supermarkets and Albertsons. I don't know if there's an Albertsons in your area. We have them in parts of Louisiana. Uh, no longer in the New Orleans area. There was one in New Orleans that didn't make it, but there's many in other parts of the state. Safeway is even more common. Their owners, they are the owners of Albertsons. And just like with Winn-Dixie, buy low, Walmart, of course. Um, I guess Food Line and Food City and all your other chains, they have these private label liquor brands. You know what Walmart does? They call Caliber. When Dixie has them, they're called Win Dixie. Albertsons used to have just Albertsons Brandy, Albertsons Gin, and but that's been phased out to where these have these named products. D.W. Anders may be an actual person. Who it is, I don't know. Um, CVS Pharmacy, Sazerac, or the Founders Company. Who? Oh, and uh, if you go to Walmart, they'll say the Founders Company uh, for the caliber. They uh, produce the um, JT Boots, Jethro T. Boots for CVS. That, that apparently is a real person. Uh, but... The person may not be in any way related to the product. I don't know that. Um, but I guess they figured D.W. Anders sounded better than Albertson's Brandy. But this is a different product. I figured I'd drink the bottle down and um, do one more drinking of it, you know, revisit. Because you can kind of pick up some things when you revisit that you didn't do before. It's got some alcohol eggs. It's copper. It says right up there on the bottle, made with made with uh, natural flavors and caramel color. Okay, so at least they're telling you that. They don't have to tell you that. With brandy, that is not required. It's encouraged, but it's not mandatory, okay? With whiskey, it is absolutely required for American whiskey. Um, I don't know about Canadian. This is an oddball thing, just like that... Um, Hartley Brandy, which is its own brand. It's not a store brand. You can find that at many different stores. It's very similar, if not the same thing. Okay, VSOP. That means it's four years aged. If it's Sazerac, they're probably aging it in the bourbon barrels, the used bourbon barrels. Probably Buffalo Trace or Barton bourbon. Very old Barton bourbon in uh, Bardstown, Kentucky, and Louisville. They have a few facilities. Uh, I saw the huge barrel rooms in, in uh, Louis, uh, Frankfort, Kentucky. There's many at that plant, at Shinley, uh, Buffalo Trace. So, it's kind of a weird, sugary, vanilla, sort of wood, toothpick more than, more like toothpick wood than Charred white oak, but um, probably is charred white oak. You can get this on sale at Albertsons for $7.59 a bottle. 
The Hartley I got at Winn Dixie for $6.99 a bottle. It's brandy's just cheap in general. There's the air conditioner. Um, gener it's cheap in general because it's just not that popular like whiskey is these days. It may not cost any more to produce whiskey, but it's just so popular that it commands a bigger price. Forty years ago, brandy probably costs more. But anyway, you know these trends in drinking go. I noticed the same thing with the Hartley. It has a, a strange pepper taste. I don't think they add pepper to it. I mean, could that be done? They add black pepper to brandy? I don't... You might say, ah, oh, it's just rye. They're adding rye, but... I don't know, just something different that makes me think it's not rye. And I don't know how to pin these things down very well. You might notice in my beer, wine, and liquor reviews that I have a hard time describing these drinks. Uh, you know, because I'm thinking what I'm tasting and smelling, but I can't describe it so well. Now, I'll read some reviews on Rapier and Beer Advocate, and they're this long, a paragraph, and they're saying plum, nutmeg, and they go on and on. It might be 200 words of different descriptors. Nougat, nutmeg, uh, pomegranate pumpernickel bread and all this and I'm thinking I just drank that beer and smelled it and tasted it. It didn't have all those 200 uh, things. How could it be all that? But this has a strange vegetable taste like celery. Celery. That's what I'm starting to think. Now you know how celery has like a kind of an odd spiciness to it if you think about it. It's, it's very different. But I can't sit here, you know, and say it's bad. Oh, it's bad. It's $7.59 a bottle. It's bad. It tastes bad. It's, it's bad. I said that with Hartley Brandy, the regular VS, which I've never seen anymore, thankfully. I mean, that was bad. And I did finish the bottle, but it was not pleasant. Maybe they got a lot of feedback, because they'll say on every bottle, we love to hear from our customers, call us. They might have gotten people calling them or sending them emails saying, this stuff's terrible. Because then all of a sudden, I started seeing the VSOP showing up. Maybe they said, look, how hard would it, they might have had extra capacity in the barrel rooms, let's just put it in there for four years. It's going to take away, you know, two more years, it's going to take away that yuckiness that we all know is there in the VS. And, I mean, that's what I think happened. Um, they never say it's distilled in Kentucky, though. They just say bottled. Or with the Palma Sun blended in bottled. So I'm wondering, now you see on this bottle it doesn't say we love to hear from our customers call, because it's a private label. So you would have to go through Albertsons or Safeway on this item. But you could get the Hartley call. And I find that Sazerac's pretty good at giving you feedback. You see there's a code here. It's 42, 24, and there's spaces between these numbers. Okay, 42, 24, 112, 15, 1107. Okay. It. I mean, it's a mystery. The bottle does say 42, 15, 18. It's weird. Uh, nice looking bottle, though, really. It's kind of plain. But not terrible. Um, Now there's some kind of writing behind there. DW and reflect on the shared moment. Choose the subtle essence of this exquisite brandy and savor the difference. Uh, yeah, I don't know about exquisite. DW Anders invites you to 
relax and reflect on, and then it's all covered up. It's like some old parchment, you know, that they found in a drawer. You know, the mystery of D.W. Andrews. And that's kind of neat the way they do that. It's better than them just saying, ah, it's 7.50, drink it, you bum. You bought it because it's cheap. You know, that really wouldn't look too good on a label. So, um, Now, same thing, medium body, kind of a measured finish, like not lingering, not quick, too quick of a drop off, kind of typical. I mean, I guess Sazerac is such a huge company. And they do all the Buffalo Trace and the Pappy Van Winkle, and they got a name for themselves, and they got all this capacity. So Walmart, and Dixie, Abbotson, Safeway, probably a whole bunch of other people just contract with them and say, look, we want something that's okay. We don't want to hear a bunch of complaints from the customers. We want something serviceable, okay, for our budget store brand line. When Dixie's been doing it for a long time, I don't hear, ever hear anybody complaining about that. That's horrible. I mean, they're just buying it for a Mardi Gras parade or a Christmas party or some kind of other party, a wedding. And they're not doing this videos. So. But with this one, you could do this, right? Like what I'm doing, because it has this like strange character to it. You can make a long video or you can't figure it out. Like E and J V S is it's good, kinda. You know, it's like so simple though that you can't really say too much about it. You just say, oh yeah, it's standard, like, it's functional, serviceable. Whereas this one is a little bit strange. <laughs> I don't know what the thinking was behind it is what I'm trying to say. It's, uh, you would think if it was just a private label brand, it would just be extremely standard like the old Albertsons brandy that I had, which I had no complaints about, especially since it was $4.99 a bottle on a closeout. But um, I find it odd that it would have, they would do something like this that's sort of exotic. And I don't mean exemplary, <laughs> like it's elevated, it just, it's exotic, it's peculiar, odd, strange, weird, unusual. Um, I rarely get any feedback on this. I, don't think there's a whole lot of YouTube video reviewing interest in brandy, much more in whiskey. So, you know, I, I do these videos and people are like, eh, I don't really watch them too much. But um, if you ever do try this, I'd be curious to see what you think about it. Oh well, that's the last I'll ever make a, I can't conceive of ever making a future video about D.W. Anders. Thanks for watching this video production. <laughs>